afternoon, everyone. We welcome you again to the SISBD Virtual Wellness Month. I'm your host again for today, Nadia, and we are just so happy to have you all. So again, today, you remember on Thursdays, I told you there was a little twist with nutrition and mental health. So today we have with us Ms. Patrice Williams, a certified nutritionist who is going to speak with us on fake food and real food. So this is one that I was very excited about because I want to know what is real food and the, the balance and the nutritional how that we get from food. So Ms. Patrice Williams, we hand over to you and we look forward to all that you have for us today. So Patrice. Hi, Nadia. Hi, Kieran. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon. I'm really looking forward to sharing this information with you. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen right now. Okay, there we go. So what we're going to be discussing today is what we call food therapy or nutrition therapy. And I'm going to give you some um, information that will help you to understand more holistically that some foods actually harm you or what we call food, huh, some foods harm and some foods heal. So um, Nadine did a good job of um, Thing in introducing who I am. So we will, uh, we will skip this section and we will get straight into it. So we will be discussing real food versus fake food. And I believe the truth will surprise you. Okay, so as we know, we live in a very toxic world. Whether you're in your home, office, sitting in traffic or outside in the natural environment, our health is constantly coming under assault. There are foods, in quotation marks, that are a simple, quick belly full, but they do nothing for your health and your wellness but fill your belly. And then on the other hand, there are foods that are body perfecting, immune building, they defend your health and beauty against environmental, chemical, and biological assaults, which we are constantly encountering in our everyday life. So to start, we need to make that distinction. So we need to understand that we cannot subsist or we cannot live on what we call fake foods and expect to be healthy. But I'm going to qualify it here. I'm not here to preach against any particular type of food or to tell you not to eat KFC. But I'm here to give you some food science perspective and some information to empower you to make steps to pursue a lifestyle and not a dead style. OK, so points of distinction. So. A lot of people, when I say I start talking about fake food, they think they probably start thinking about, you know, um, fake rice or these different things. But we will get into that, and and you will understand what I'm 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 referring to in a little bit. So how to identify fake food? So fake food is like an unwanted religious experience because. You have to trust and believe what an unknown, unseen being is telling you is in that package, is really in that package. Because the food that you're holding or looking at, it looks nothing like what it's claiming to be. So as you see in the illustrations here, you're supposed to trust and believe that the food on your left-hand side, you're supposed to trust and believe that's meat right? That looks nothing like meat. And on the right hand side, no, you're supposed to believe, trust and believe that this is corn flakes. This somehow has something to do with corn, right? But you cannot, you cannot know that for sure. You just have to trust 
that what it says on the label is really in there. Okay, another point of distinction, and I know this is going to hit some people in the heart really, really hard, because I hear this all the time that, you know, eating healthy, it's too expensive, this and that, but how to identify fake food is that it's cheap. And the reason why fake foods are cheap is because one natural food item is split into several different extracts and sold as many different products. So for example, instead of getting say like the whole sweet corn with all the fiber, water, healthy fats, vitamins, minerals, and the natural sweetness that is in the corn, that single corn is heated, pureed, chemically treated, dehydrated, and split into cornstarch, high fructose corn syrup, corn oil, corn meal, corn flakes, corn flour, and the list goes on. And yes, it's cheap, but the, the sad thing about fake food is that this processing strips all of the natural flavor, it kills all of the nutrients, it, it kills all of the natural health defending and health restorative properties contained in the whole food. And so to compensate for the lack of food value, food product develop, developers, um, food engineers, they, they engineer fake vitamins or what we call artificial vitamins and minerals to make it sound and look good. Fake flavor, and in, and in order for it to taste good, they add a ton of salt and sugar to make what I call industrial dust, palatable. And they enrich, that's a term that we are all too familiar with. They enrich this fake food to make it marketable and soothe your conscience that what you are eating and feeding your children and yourself is food and not just what it actually is. And that's industrial dust. So this is an uh, 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 illustration of what I was referring to. So what you're seeing in the, the illustration here is um, corn. So it's a single kernel of corn. And what, it's, what this illustration is showing is all of the different products that the single grain of corn is split and processed into. So on the left-hand side, you have the endosperm of the corn. I'm not sure if you're seeing my point, but the endosperm of the corn is made into cornmeal, which we use to make you know, breakfast cereals. It's used for cattle feed, cattle feed, sorry. The, it's made into corn syrup. It's made into dextrin. It's made into corn sugar. It's made into industrial starch, you know, that the starch that you use to spray your clothes and all of these various other items. You see on the outside of the corn now, the outer yellow area, that's called the hull. And that is used, that is produced into or manufactured into bran and it's also used as cattle feed. The germ of the corn is that area where it has the healthy fat. So this is where you would get um, corn oil, you would get glycerin, you would get refined corn oil, which is used in salad dressing, cooking oils, and in certain industries, it's also used to make soups. So as you can see, because this one product, this one whole food is split into all these different products, that's why when you go and you purchase your, your bag of corn flakes, which then has to be enriched with vitamins and minerals because the processing strips all the vitamins and minerals from it. So then artificial vitamins and minerals have to be put in there. Now you can understand why it's so cheap in comparison to the whole food. Okay, so when I remember when I said that it's like a religious experience, you have to trust and believe what 
the person on the label wrote is what it is like really looking at these things can you guarantee that this is really corn that you're guessing or it's corn that it's coming from no you can't because it looks nothing like the original food okay so enough with all the doom and gloom let's go on to the sunny side of things now so how to identify real food and it's real simple real food equals whole food it is recognizable as what it's claiming to be and it's purchased as close as possible to its fresh picked god-given state that is or for example, whole fresh tomatoes, whole breadfruit, which is in season now, by the way, um, sweet peppers, potatoes, pineapples, etc. You don't need to have any faith in order to look at this food and say, okay, this is what it's claiming to be. So th these foods can be sourced from farmers markets, from roadside produce vendors, and even from your groceries right so even frozen produce which have been washed peeled frozen um fruits vegetables and meats are acceptable because it's still whole food and it's still recognizable as what it's claiming to be it hasn't been the, the nutrients haven't been utterly processed out of it okay so we saw the illustration of the fake corn or corn products and we had to do a bit of a guessing game as to what those things really were but here you can see if 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 there's a if if there's a package like we see on the right hand side that's claiming to be corn it, it looks like corn it, you can tell that it is what it's claiming to be okay so now for the cost and consequence of fake food. Remember I said in when we opened that you cannot expect to subsist or live on fake foods and expect to be healthy. Um, so we're going now into the cost and consequences of fake food. So while they are cheap, while they are easily accessible, there, there are consequences, right? To having this type of, I wouldn't even call it a lifestyle, I call it a death style. Um, so fake foods are essentially devoid of not just micronutrients, but also fiber and water. So consumption of these foods on a regular basis would lead to constipation, which is detrimental to you, but of course it's, be it's beneficial to other commercial enterprises as consumers of fake food regularly need to use artificial laxatives, they need to use colon cleansers on a regular basis or fiber extracted from whole foods such as bran or bran flakes. And if the constipation is left untreated, this can lead to, this can and it does lead to colon cancer, irritable bowel syndrome, ill temper, and a host of other physical, mental, and emotional diseases. So if, you, if your partner is a bit moody, you may need to um, buy them a bit, of, a bit more fruits and vegetables and make sure they include that in their diet a bit more. Okay, so fake foods have the calorie providing nutrients. So they have the protein, fats, and carbohydrates but few or none of the naturally occurring vitamins, minerals, enzymes, electrolytes, and antioxidants necessary to properly digest and assimilate them into your system. So, um, for example, corn. Corn would have something called amylase in it. And amylase is the enzyme used to digest that very corn or the carbohydrates in the corn. But if you, if you just eat the corn, that one single part of the corn, that is that corn flakes, for example, or even corn meal, for example, is made out of, then that amylase has already been processed out. So your body is not gonna properly utilize and assimilate those carbohydrates that are 
in that food and instead of being utilized as energy it's actually going after you eat these particular foods you will feel tired and you will just instead of being used for energy it's going to immediately store it as fat okay so as a result individuals who eat mainly fake foods retain undigested food in their guts leading to a distended stomach or what we call it in our in our culture um high stomach or big belly weight gain and lifestyle diseases such as diabetes cancer high blood pressure high cholesterol and something called brain fog um sometimes um sometimes you would you would just feel like you you're just not as sharp mentally sharp as you you usually are you're not as awake and this is called brain fog you're not you're not remembering things as you usually do and this is a cause and consequence of fake food if your diet is mainly made up of fake food this is what occurs fake food also leads to depression which surprises a lot of my clients um fake food also leads to post meal lethargy which we in our culture call either ethnic fatigue and i'm not going to say the other <laughs> the other um term we refer to it as but i think once you hear me say ethnic fatigue you understand what i mean or chronic fatigue syndrome where you're always tired so post meal lethargy is where you you're sleepy after you eat you're sleepy and that is not right because food is supposed to act as fuel so if you see that you're feeling tired after your meals you know either your food combination is wrong or your diet or that meal was just basically made up of fake food so it actually is it's taking more energy to digest that food than what the food is actually giving to you food is supposed to be fuel so you're not supposed to be tired after a meal so if you realize that you're feeling that then you need to take a look at what you're eating Okay, so fake foods, as we would have alluded to before, they have excessive amounts of artificial sweeteners, sugars, salts, and artificial flavors, all of which being unnatural, the natural mechanism of the human body cannot process it. Therefore, these the, the, the body's defense system wrap these toxins in fatty tissue to, to buffer or defend our vital organs from being poisoned by these harmful artificial substances. And a lot of this, the times this shows up as excess fat around the stomach, it could manifest itself as cellulite, but that is, that is a symptom of toxic, uh, your body is toxic because fat is, is part of our body's defense and protective mechanism. Okay, so other course and consequences of fake foods is that excess sugars and salts throws off the electrolyte balance of our body, causing, causing a power surge, which you know, you see it, you see it most um glaring or most obviously in children when they eat sugary foods they get a burst of energy so they will start running around and screaming and getting hyper but it happens in us as well we just know how to control ourselves and we won't be running around the office but you get this burst of energy or you feel this burst of energy and that burst of energy is like a power surge and we know just like in our homes if there's a power surge, it actually short circuits our appliances and damages our appliances. Same thing when you consume a lot of sugar and salt, it actually sh short circuits the body's electrical impulses. And these electrical impulses are within the brain, within the heart, and all of these and all of these systems. So people who eat uh, high sugar, high salt diet, they tend to suffer from depression more often than others who don't. This leads immediately to dehydration, drowsiness, brain fog, brain fog, ill-temperedness, moodiness, and over time it leads to chronic fatigue, 
reduced performance capacity, depression, diabetes, hypertension, cancer, and of course, eventually premature death. Okay, and this is just, we're just revisiting here the, the, all the ways that those unnatural foods or those fake foods are split into so many different products and the reason why they can be sold so cheaply. Okay, so now they lie to the end of the rainbow, the cost and consequence of real food. So real food from plant-based sources contains fiber and water which is often overlooked when talking about nutrition or nutrients, but they are indispensable for proper nutrient, for proper digestion and nutrient assimilation. They are crucial for elimination of toxins and for overall good health, because you know, if you don't have enough fiber in your diet, that leads to constipation. And that means your body is not able to get rid of all those toxins that, you know, we inhale, that we get through like prison body products and of course that we consume because unless you're unless you are eating 100% organic or whatever it is which is prohibitive for a lot of people there's going to be toxins in your food because food that you consume but it's to such a degree that your body is able to get rid of it if you have a healthy diet or that you eat real foods on a regular basis. Real foods ensure regularity and the elimination of toxins, which are inhaled, absorbed, ingested through environmental pollution and toxic chemicals in processed foods and some beauty and hygiene products. Real foods give your body the tools, defenses and resources it needs to battle the assaults that we come under and for sure we come under in the modern world and especially in this environment of COVID-19 where you, know, you need to build up that immunity to battle all of the additional assaults that we come into contact with daily. Um, so real foods help to maintain, restore and improve your health and beauty. Because you know, when you consume real food, it helps with your skin, it helps with everything. So it's not just feeling good, it's, it's not just about feeling good, it's also about looking good. So I guess this could have been a, 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 um, a interactive part of the, the session. I don't know if we can open it up for questions at this point because the question is, do you know any examples of fake foods? Like, do, does anybody in our audience know any examples of fake foods? Or if you, if you know any examples, um, you can write it in the question and answer se section, or you can write it into the chat. And then we will see if um, if what I reveal to you, if it was if it was um, if it was similar to what you were thinking. Um, we had a hand up from Nikki Abram. I don't know if she had a question. Oh. So do we? Do you guys know any examples of fake foods? Okay, yeah, I'm seeing Nikki Abraham has her hand up as well. Nikki, if you have a question, you could you, you could ask your question. You can turn your mic on, Nikki. So we have a. Um, Two responses in, in, in the QA. Um, so one person said nuggets and the other okay. person said doubles. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. Anyone else? Nikki? Okay. 
I saw her hand, hand up, but I'm still seeing her mic off. So we will just go along and, and you all will be able to tell me at the end if any of the foods on the list, if that is what you were thinking of. So we'll go on to the next slide and hold on to your seats, people, because I know I might be coming after some of all your favorite stuff. But I, I say I'm sorry <laughs> one time, right? I say I'm sorry already. Okay, so should we go and read out the real foods or the fake foods first? Let's, let's go with the real foods because that's real easy, right? So of course we have things like peas and beans, we have pak joy, bhaji, kale, dashin bush, bodhi, string beans, breadfruit, carrots, rice, not the plastic rice, real rice. You know, um, we, have, uh, we actually have a local rice now, I think it's Maruga Hill rice, which is interesting. Um, potatoes, fish, not, um, not ocean fish, like fish that you get from the ocean, not farmed fish, right? Yard fowl, which, you know, is called organic free range. So we've been having organic free range chicken, chicken, our grandparents who would like rear their own, um, rear their own animals, rear their own chicken. And we didn't even we didn't even realize it. We didn't realize how good we had it. We just call it yard fowl, but people call it organic free range and put a premium price on the stuff that we used to be getting for free. Okay, so fresh local meats and local fruit. So take a deep breath, guys. So fake food, and I know this is a staple for many, many, many people because a lot of my clients cry when I tell them this. Um, commercial mass-produced bread, which has not been baked fresh every day. And uh, I'm not even going to call any company names because I'm not trying to get sued, but all you know what I mean. So cornflakes, which I would have alluded to before, instant oats, most store-bought, drinks or juices, if you look at your list of ingredients, the first two ingredients are sugar and water. So essentially what you're drinking there is syrup because that's what syrup is, right? Sugar and water. And then way down on the list, you see maybe 20% juice. You're fooling yourself with that. Okay, so obviously soft drink, which is, again, that is just syrup flavored or color. Color, colored water. So soft drinks, pop soda, pop tarts, boxed mac and cheese, most types of pasta, whole other bread, cricks, cricks, that's, it's delicious. Just like bread, it's delicious. It's very addictive, but from a food science perspective and from a nutritional perspective, it's not real food the white stuff, you know, they try to put in the grains, the real grains and stuff in it now, which is better, but white cricks, that is not considered real food. Slice or American cheese that I think most of us, we kind of know because it looks like plastic and it feels like plastic. And somebody would have said nuggets. So well done. Um, so many foreign fast food, companies, their meats, their patties, their nuggets, etc. So the person who said nuggets, you were right on the ball. Well done. And the scary part is listed last, many commercial baby formulas, because what is in most of these baby formulas are artificial, which means is another word for fake or man-made vitamins, minerals, etc. Right? So as, your, as our nurses would say, as I'm sure Nadia would say, breast, breast milk is best. Okay? All right. So we, this is a bit of a bonus here about regularity. So I'm not sure how much of us knows that 70% of our body's immune system is located in our gut and our digestive tract. I will give you a little time to really absorb that because this is very important for us to understand. 70% of our body's immune system is located in our gut. I see Nadia has, uh, has her hand up. 
here on. No, sorry. I was just um, agreeing with you. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So let's think about this now. So if 70% of your body's immune system is clogged with, and this is going to get graphic, rotting animal flesh, which is meat, sour milk, rotten rice, fruits and vegetables, processed foods and toxic chemical, is it any wonder why so many people develop lifestyle diseases and die prematurely because of irregularity? That is, and a lot of people do not realize that constipation is not having at least two, not just one, but two unforced, and unforced is a key word, bowel movements per day. Right? So if you're not having at least two unforced bowel movements per day, that is considered constipation. So good health starts with having a clean and clear digestive tract. Okay, so I'm going to say it again, 70% of our body's immune system, which is very crucial under normal conditions and even more crucial in the the current conditions that we're living in is in the digestive tract, right? Okay, so which means eating whole plant-based foods regularly in order to properly digest and absorb the good and eliminate the threats to our health, beauty, and vitality is very important. And uh, some of my colleagues, we have a running joke that the bigger your toilet paper bill, the smaller your hospital bill. So in closing, I would like to say, eat whole foods, poop regularly, and enjoy the best of a God-given lifestyle. Thank you very much. And now we can open up the floor for any questions that we may have had. So we welcome people to um, place their questions in the Q and A or um, or in the chat, or raise raise your hand if you if you want to ask a question directly. So we have one question in the um, Q and A. Is quinoa fake? Is quinoa real or fake? Quinoa is real. Quinoa is a is a natural grain. It's actually an ancient grain, and it's very it's one of the few grains that are high in protein. Um, the only thing is that you have to make sure and soak your quinoa because it has what is called anti-nutrient properties. So you have to soak your quinoa, wash it out properly prior to boiling it. So yes, quinoa is real. So Patrice, what was amazing for me today was finding out that pasta was baked. From a nutritional perspective, because you, you're not getting that fiber, you're not getting those natural nutrients, it is considered a fake food. It, it is considered a fake food. It's not that you cannot eat it, but you need to, to supplement your food intake with real foods. And as I said, real food is whole food that looks as close as possible to its fresh pick form. So you would notice, um, Nadia, Nadia, um, that, that um, if your diet is made up predominantly of, say, like pasta and bread and um, say like things like cricks, you would more swiftly get a distended stomach or a high stomach or big belly, and you would more likely be more likely to put on weight than if you were eating like whole foods like if, if it's like you know you can get the actual wheat berries and ground them for yourself because just like the corn the illustration i showed of the corn whole wheat like the whole wheat berry in our parents days and our grandparents days that would have been considered real food and that's what they used to make bread out of but bread and pasta now it's just made up of that endosperm part so you're not getting any of the vitamins, minerals, et cetera, that 
you would get from the whole wheat berry. So we have a hand up from Shanika Daniel. So I'm going to allow Shanika to, to talk. So Shanika, you can unmute and um, ask a question. Shanika? Hi, good evening. Can everyone Hi. hear me? Yes. I'm okay, here. great. Um, you mentioned instant oats earlier. Yes. But um, what about rolled oats? Is that considered an, um, a fake food? And if yes, what is an alternative? Thank you. Okay, so that is an excellent question and I'm glad that somebody asked that. The, the instant oats are instant because they have been processed further and like pre-cooked. So, and all, and the, like the, the bran layer and everything has been removed from it. So that's why it's considered a fake food. So when you eat oats, you're getting a lot of carbohydrates without all of the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that are necessary for those carbohydrates to be properly digested. So an alternative, yes, the rolled oats are definitely better because it's less processed and that's why it takes longer to cook. Uh, but most ideally is the steel cut oats. And I know that a lot of my clients say, you know, these steel cut oats, they're really hard to cook. They take too long. And when you cook them, it's very chewy. So I know a lot of us have um, the magic, is the magic, is the magic bullet mm -hmm. or the neutral mix now in our homes. So in order to get away from that chewiness or that long time that you have to, to, to use to cook these steel cut oats, you can just put these steel cut oats in your in your vice in your neutral bullet or your magic bullet and blend it up so it becomes like like more like a powder now so you're getting all your nutrients you're getting all your fiber and at that point all you have to do is pour some hot water on it and you're getting your your porridge with all of the good um nutrients and minerals that we need so we have some uh, questions. Um, that is asking pasta versus rice. Rice, definitely. Um, jasmine rice is very good. Um, our uh, parboiled rice is fine as well. But of course, you know, brown rice, it's less processed. So you would get more, more food value out of that than say white rice or, um, or, or um, what was it? She said pasta, right, from the pasta. So rice is preferable over pasta. Brown rice above both. So what about like brown basmati rice? Oh, that is excellent. All right, okay. That's like, that's yeah. like at the, the top of the, um, the food pyramid right there. Okay, all right, the next question. Uh, should we not eat meat? So wait, Patrice, as you on rice, yeah. <laughs> Kieran, I wanted to find out about the rice. So oh, parboiled God. rice is brown rice. Um, parboiled rice. It's or if parboiled rice is brown rice. Is yeah, that it's considered like brown rice. Yeah. No, no, parboiled rice is not considered brown rice. It has because parboiled means partially boiled, right? So it it will cook. It will cook faster than brown rice. Brown rice on the package, and you will actually see brown rice, and it actually looks darker. Yeah, it's brown. Than, yeah, than the parboiled rice. So if if I had to do a hierarchy, the white rice would be at the well, pasta would be at the pasta and flour, and these kinds of things would be at the bottom. Um, brown rice would be, I mean, rice, white rice would be above the pasta. Brown rice would be above the white rice. Well, parboiled rice would be above white, white rice, then brown rice. And then at the top of the hierarchy, which means the most ideal would be like our provisions, like our sweet potato, our edos, our um, dashin, and these kinds of foods. That would be most ideal above all those other foods, if that makes any sense. Yes, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, someone is asking, should we not eat meat? 
Um, I, I believe that you can get very important nutrients out of meat that you would not be able to get as easily out of a plant-based, um, plant-based foods. And this is from someone who has been, who was vegan, who was a practicing vegan for about 15 years. Um, but I, I think that veganism has its place and it is something, or vegetarianism. Well, ve let's talk about veganism. I think veganism has its place just like intermittent fasting has its place. But just like with its intermittent fasting, you do it for a season. You do it for a time. If it is, you know that your body is extremely toxic. If you know that you've been living 20 years eating fake food, then going on a vegan diet for a couple of years is a good idea, right? But you, ne you need to do this with the right knowledge because there are unhealthy vegan diets as well. So I would advocate more whole foods trying to consume more plant-based whole foods than necessarily going vegan because going vegan is not for everybody. Um, that this, my, in my practice, I prescribe meal plans based on somebody's blood type. And uh, veganism is ideal for persons who have say blood type A, but people who have blood type O, they need animal-based products in their diet, right? But individuals with blood type A, they don't have the digestive enzymes in their stomach to properly digest animal-based products, especially like meats, like beef and all these things. So they will have ill effects or ill health effects if they eat too much meat. So it's a lot of, it, you have to have a lot of information. You have to be armed with a lot of information before pursuing any type of diet. Okay. So um, Tawan is asking, is yoga the healthy choice to help regularize digestion or would that be considered fake food because of the process and added sugars, etc.? Okay, that's an excellent question. And my answer to that question is that not all yogurts are created equal because there are yogurts who, that are just the equivalent of ice cream because of the amount of sugar and chemical additives that are in there. And that I guess that is where um, reading your list of ingredients comes in. Because if it is you, like say, I think some Greek yogurts are fairly okay, but still you have to read your list of ingredients. If it is you see like the first two ingredients are sugar and uh, um, high fructose corn syrup or these kinds of things, you know that's a dessert. But if you see that, okay, your list of ingredients are made up of two things, milk, fermented milk and probiotics, then you know that, okay, this is a real food that I'm consuming. So yes, some yogurts are considered fake food, but some yogurts are good and they're good um, for some people, again, because this is also depending on your blood type, some people cannot tolerate milk or dairy, depending on your blood type. So for some people, this is a very good inclusion in your diet. So people who are like blood type B, this could help. But people, again, who are blood type A, blood type O, this is not necessarily favorable. Okay. Um, so oh, you saying supervision is good? I always yeah, thought that it was heavy food and it should be avoided. That is not true. Um, I think that that was with the the that time of, of where a lot of people would make recommendations, not really based on the food science and just based on the fact that yes, these are foods uh, that, that contain carbohydrates, but it's not processed carbohydrates, like say flour. So provisions are, as I said, at the top of the hierarchy, as far as like, if you are choosing your carb, the carbohydrates, component of your diet. Provisions are, to me, ideal. They, it's above rice, it's above bread, it's above pasta and all of these, these things. Provisions, if you eat it in the right combination, they can actually help with weight loss. 
if it is you swap out, say, bread for provisions, or if you swap out, say, pasta for provisions. So provisions, when you say heavy, I'm assuming you mean they are they're very satisfying because, and they're this, so satisfying because they have a high fiber content. So when you eat these foods, you feel full and you feel full over a longer period of time than say if you eat pasta or if you eat um, cricks or if you eat um, even white rice. If you eat provisions, like say if you eat breadfruit in the morning for breakfast, say you do like hash browns with instead of potato, you use breadfruit. You are not gonna be feeling hungry until maybe two o'clock in the evening because it is that filling because of the high fiber content because it still has the natural vitamins, minerals and et cetera. So your body's gonna tell you, yes, I received all of the nutrients that I needed. Oh, and another thing that I should have said also, another thing that, that helps you to understand if you have consumed fake food is that you would eat and you would eat a good, a substantial amount, but soon after you realize that you feel hungry or soon after the meal you realize you're craving sweet stuff. So that is symptomatic that the meal that you had was predominantly made up of fake food. When you have those sweet cravings after you eat, that's your body telling you, okay, yes, we eat, yes, we our belly physically full, but I haven't received those nutrients that I need to fight off whatever bacteria or pollution or repair whatever it is going on within the system. So it starts craving sweet things. So it's all okay. okay. um, It depends on the powdered milk again, but powdered milk is just, in theory, or it should be just milk that has been um, dehydrated down to powdered form. But again, you have to list, read your list of ingredients. If you see things like sugar and um, cornstarch and all of that stuff in there, then you know, okay, this is not really 100% milk. This has a lot of fillers, what we call in the industry fillers in it to make it look like a lot, but really what you're getting is less than what it looks like in the package. So we have a couple of questions. Um... Someone asked, what about um, gluten and gluten-free foods? If, the, if they're, what is the question exactly? If they're good or if they're- if no, they're yeah, that's just the question. What about gluten and gluten-free foods? Okay, um, well, I can just say what I know about gluten and gluten-free foods because I'm not sure exactly what the person is asking. So um, not all gluten-free foods they're are free. If they're, good. Well, if they're good, yeah. okay. Um, the thing about it is that gluten comes from what is no, what we call flour now, what used to be in our grandparents and parents' days, what was flour, wheat flour. Wheat flour isn't wheat flour now or white flour now is not the same stuff our parents and grandparents used to consume. Because if you and I wanted to actually um I think I have a package of, of flour. If you read the list of ingredients on a package of flour, you would realize before it says wheat, which is what flour is supposed to be made up of 100%. It's supposed to be from that wheat berry. If you look at the list of ingredients, you will see things like calcium carbonate. Mm. You will see things like fungal amylase. Calcium carbonate, is a white powdery substance that looks exactly like flour, but what it is really is grounded up chalk, right? So, and that is a filler. So you, in a, in a say, say in a one pound bag of so-called flour, which you're assuming is going to be the whole wheat berry that is just grounded up and the bran section removed, a lot of it is chalk or a good portion of it is calcium carbonate. I, I, I really want to go and get that, um, that um, flower to, to show you guys because I bought it for another presentation to show the list of ingredients. But 
when you go to the grocery, you can look it up for yourself, look at it, look at your list of ingredients and you will see calcium carbonate as one of the ingredients and Google what calcium carbonate is, it's chalk. So um, 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 somebody was asking, um, combination of provision, could you explain further? When we, with regards to food combination, no, well, I think I um, remember you were talking about um, provisions earlier. So she's she's asking um, um to explain a little further because you, I think you mentioned something about the portion of um a provision. Okay. Um, what I was talking about is what I was referring to was like food combination, and that's a whole other presentation. But I'll just present. I will just give you a general idea now. Okay. So, um, traditionally we eat like as if it's the last supper because I think early nutrition um, advice that we would have received was that on a single plate, you're supposed to have protein, carbohydrates, greens, and every, every food group on that one plate. And that's how we eat traditionally, right? So like say Sunday lunch or lunch any day, you have your rice, you have your meat, probably two different meats you have or several different starches. And that is, okay. So how can I put this very concisely? Um, so carbohydrates, which are like your provisions, your rice and these kinds of things, they require an alkaline environment to be properly digested. Proteins require an acidic environment. So that's within your digestive tract in order to be digested, right? So if you eat these two foods together, it actually causes maldigestion. So you, the food is not gonna be properly digested. It's not gonna be properly assimilated because your body will be secreting the um, acid, um enzymes the alkaline enzymes and then it's going to neutralize right so instead of either of the foods being properly digested your stomach your your, your digestive tract neutralizes it it ferments and then it just empties out of your digestive tract or gets stored or stuck in there so, we so I'm, I'm glad you mentioned those two things because well yeah. i have two questions i want to ask for you Lee, which is okay. um just a brief explanation of complex versus simple carbohydrates. And the other, the other one is to tell us a little bit about this idea of an alkaline diet. Right. Okay, so let me finish answering the individual's questions first. So, so carbohydrates, now you're supposed to, with carbohydrates, so like with your rice, with your sweet potatoes, you're actually supposed to eat that with vegetables, leafy greens because um, colorful, bright colorful vegetables. So like carrots and your green peas and your leafy greens. You know, that's what you're supposed to eat with your carbohydrate. With your proteins, the same thing. You're supposed to eat your animal-based proteins with your leafy greens because the leafy greens and your vegetables, your brightly colored vegetables, they have all the enzymes to properly digest and assimilate these foods, right? But if you eat, um, carbohydrates and animal-based um, proteins together, that is what results in post-meal lethargy or ethnic fatigue, where your body overworks itself, the food does not get um, properly digested, and that leads to either a high stomach, it leads to constipation, it leads to tiredness after you eat, and all of these different things. Um, so that's that in a nutshell. Um, so the other, the other item that you were asking about Kiron was what? There were two other things. Yeah. Simple versus, um, complex carbohydrates and right. just the, um, tell us about this idea of alkaline diet. Okay. So simple versus complex carbohydrates. So the reason why provisions are, that I said are on top of the food hierarchy is because they are what you would call complex carbohydrates. So they contain what is called complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates come from whole foods. So they're slowly digested in your system. When you talk about things like your blood sugar, or your blood glucose level, 
because these things have so much fiber and because they are more slowly digested, they are not going to spike your blood sugar levels. They're not going to cause um, a, a spike in insulin production. And therefore, it's going to, um, it's not going to lead to lifestyle diseases like diabetes and, well, type two diabetes and these other complications. It's not going to lead to post meal lethargy. It's going to actually give you energy rather than robbing you of energy. Simple carbohydrates are like the flour, are like the pasta, are like the cricks, which I saw somebody in the chat said. Um, let me see if I can see the name. Your battery might go so high. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they said cricks now, nah, boy, vital supplies. I understand. Um, but cricks and these flour based products are what you call um, simple carbohydrates. So when you consume these foods, they don't have that fiber, they don't have those nutrients in it. So when you eat them, you that causes us, it's very, very quickly broken down the sugars from them or the carbohydrates from them are very, very quickly released into your blood. That causes a spike in your insulin levels. And that would lead to, um, so you, you feel, you may feel a spike in energy instantly, but then afterwards, after you eat, you realize you feel drowsy. And that is symptomatic of consuming simple carbohydrates. Those are the type of foods that because of the, they cause that spike and then cr that crash in your blood glucose levels. Those are the foods that would, if you eat them like habitually over a long period of time, those are the foods that are going to lead to the lifestyle diseases that we talked about. And also simple carbohydrates, they're also inflammatory in nature. So they cause various other inflammatory diseases. And some practitioners, they would say that mostly all diseases are a result of chronic inflammation or at their root cause is chronic inflammation. And I believe that there is a lot of truth to that statement. Um, okay, the other item was the alkaline diet. So um, these foods, that we are causing, that we are causing, like processed foods, simple carbohydrates, like your flour, um, like your cornflakes, like your, <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there. Um, like all these different foods, they are not only inflammatory, but they're also acid forming in your system, right? So if, you, if your diet is made up of mostly these foods, so like, flour-based foods, processed meats like lunch meat, sausage, these kinds of things, your body is going to become acidic. And disease loves an acidic environment. Bacteria loves an acidic environment. Um, um, viruses love an acidic internal body environment. When it is, blood is supposed to be, it's not supposed to be highly alkal alkaline. It's supposed to be mildly alkaline right so when it is you start consuming more um whole foods like okay say your carrots your sweet potato your vegetables your pumpkin your all of these things just in trying to incorporate these foods more into your daily lifestyle these have an alkalizing effect in them because God knew what he was doing when he created these foods. And he knows that the human body, the blood is meant to be slightly alkaline, not highly al alkaline, like some people say, because if your body is too alkaline, that will also cause disease. But your body, your blood is supposed to be slightly alkaline. So when you start consuming these whole foods um, and these, a lot of plant-based foods, it actually alkalizes your system and disease does not thrive in an alkaline system. So you would realize that you have more vigor, you have more performance capacity, you, you, you're, you're just sharp, you're just mentally sharp, you're remembering stuff, you're just, you have more energy. Instead of taking the elevator, you want to take the steps. 
you know, you just realize that you have more vigor, your, your, your mood is better. People think, a lot of people think that sugar and like a lot of bakery products is a treat, but it's not. Like instantly you feel good, but eventually it, it leads to lifestyle diseases and premature um, death. So I um, does that answer the question, Kiran? Yeah, yes, uh, pretty much. Okay. So um, uh, just a couple of quick questions. Um, someone asked if, if the eggs we purchase in the supermarket are fake or real. And um, yeah. Eggs yeah, are fine, eggs, eggs are fine, eggs are real. It's a whole food. Um, yeah, so eggs are fine. A lot of our local foods, we don't realize how blessed we are with regards to our food culture and our food environment. A lot, most local foods, they are real. And that is because of our culture and that is because we don't have that technology yet to really destroy what God has given us, essentially. So we are very blessed in the Caribbean and so-called um, underdeveloped or developing nations where our food is actually superior to a lot of the foods that you can get in the so-called developed nations because it's closer to its natural form than you would get in other developed states. So how should we compare oh. this? Um, can you repeat that? How should we cook oh. eggs? Um, how should you cook eggs? It, it, eggs can be, uh, they can be scrambled, that, that's fine, but the, more important than the preparation is the pairing. And food combination is a very important aspect of a food science and health. So if you're having eggs, you should not have eggs with carbohydrates. So you shouldn't have eggs with bread or with cricks or with um, other plants, be other animal-based proteins. You should have eggs with like a side of like greens, probably bodhi, um, probably bhaji, probably um as you know like a probably a, on top of a salad you know a green salad with your lettuce your kale your spinach your olive oil you know with your little sprinkle of um of salt or whatever seasonings the thing about it is that the negative side of our food culture is that we want to put everything on the plate like if it's the last supper but that is not a healthy way to eat. And that's why we, as a culture, suffer from ethnic fatigue when we, after we eat, because our method of food combination is poor and it's not ideal for, 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 for health. So you can prepare eggs scrambled, you can prepare them boiled, you could prepare them poached. I have a method where I would um, actually prepare my eggs in the oven. So it comes out like an omelet. So you, um, you add your oil, whether it's olive oil, you sprinkle your, your dish, your heat safe dish with, after you, you just grease it, you sprinkle with a, a little flour so that it doesn't stick. You scramble up your eggs, you season it in your bowl, and then you pour it into your heat safe dish and you put it in the oven. That's a wonderful way to prepare your egg. So it comes out like a like an omelet, but with less fat. I think you might need to do a video and share that one. <laughs> that is fine. We can arrange that. Okay, I'll, I'll, thank you. Thank you for, for today. I'll hand you over to Nadia. Okay, no problem. Nadia? Hello. Yes. So again, thank you very, very much, Miss Williams, for that awesome, awesome presentation. I know we bombarded you with questions because <laughs> some of them I really didn't know. And mm. I'm still I'm I'm still baffled with the eggs in the oven. So I think I'm gonna try that try that what that recipe. Awesome. 
So again, we thank you for being part of our virtual wellness month. We did learn a lot of new um, things about food and we can't wait to have your next presentation where you're going to do specific to the blood disorders. So I am asking all our members to be a part of this one where you can find out what is specific to sickle cell disease, your diet, to hemophilia, to thalassemia. This is one that I don't want you all to miss. So again, Patrice, thank you so much for being a part of our wellness month. Again, we are in our second week, so we have two more weeks to go. So we have on Mondays, we have our aerobic day, which is with our queens and kings of aerobics. We have Tuesdays, Zumba with Brittany Balfour. Wednesday, we have yoga with Siddhartha. And then we have that twist. So we had nutrition this week, and now we're going to have our psychologist next week with our mental health aspect and then we're going to have patrice again on the last week with us with our nutrition segment again we have three major competitions this year that i want you all to make sure and join and be a part one is our most sold t-shirt competition so the member or anybody in the public who sells the most t-shirts we have a grand prize for that and then we have our spoken word we have our chutney and soca competition where they're using our slogan words, hope for a cure, strength to endure, and survival for sure. Again, your video must be no more than two to three minutes. You must wear our SISBD t-shirt this year, and then you send to our SISBD um, email account, SISBDTT at gmail account, or our WhatsApp number 272-5404. So we have one more competition, which is our routine. So you have been watching our exercises, you have been watching them. We want you all to send your routines as well. We want you all to be, have fun. So next week we look forward to a, a grand week again. We continue with our hype, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, don't miss out on this amazing, amazing event. So again, thank you all for tuning in. And we will see you guys next week, Monday, same time, same place. Okay, thanks, bye. Ladies. And thanks right, again. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. -bye. bye.